Fiscal Court, uh, March the 7th of 2023. It's uh, 9.30 a.m. And at this time, uh, Mr. Griffey, would you lead us in a prayer and a uh, Pledge of Allegiance? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we ask your hand on this court and on this county, on this state. Uh, guide each of the members of this court. Uh, keep us all uh, with, with, within your grasp. Uh, lead us to do what uh, you would have us do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Keith. Um, Sam, at this time. Mayor Sanders? Present. Sean Logston? Yes. Aaron Johnson? Here. Ron Blemel? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. All present? Thank you. Uh, Treasurer's <coughs> principal report? Yes, sir. Uh, in your packet was dated for February 23rd, February 24th, February 28th, March the 1st, and then today. Yep. I'll make a motion that we accept the Treasurer's transfer report. I second. Got a motion by Second District Magistrate Logston. A second by First District Magistrate Sanders to approve the Treasurer's transfer report as presented. Sam Colorado. Logston? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Blemel? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, presentation and approval of all bills. I make a motion that we approve all bills. I second. I have a motion by Second District Magistrate Logsdon, a second by First District Magistrate 
Sanders to approve the bills as presented. Uh, Sam, call the roll, please. Johnson? Yes. Blamel? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Logston? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Approval of the minutes from February the 21st, 2023. I make a motion that we approve the minutes for February 21st, 2023. I'll second. We had a motion by First District Magistrate Sanders, a second by Third District Magistrate Johnson to approve the minutes of the February 21st, 2023 meeting as presented. Sam, call the roll, please. Blamel? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Lobson? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, presentations, uh, Bill Harnan, you've been here, you've been here quite early this morning. Full County Soil Conservation, the Budget and Plan of Work. Good morning. Uh, in your packet, you should have our Mark. scope of work and our budget for the coming year. And I'm here to present that to you and uh, see if you got any questions. We don't have a copy. You think? Okay. Okay. Candy made some copies. They didn't make it in there. I'm sorry, I didn't get them in. Usually we email that a week or two in advance, but the scheduling it didn't work out to get it emailed to you. So, uh, sorry about that. And uh, <coughs> the other thing I was noticing is this Land and Water Conservation Fund grant. Uh, for those, that, and we got a lot of new people on the court. I, sure Mr. Bleem is familiar with what we do, but uh, we have an office in Mount Washington and uh, every county in the state has a soil conservation district and it's we work with uh, trying to prevent erosion and work on the environment and then we also administer the CAFE funds and do some, we get it to the grant for the dead animal removal. We get a 75-25 grant that we present to the physical court each year and several other things. So in seeing this grant for uh, conservation fund, if we can help with that, we would gladly work with that too. So uh, physical court's been giving us a budget for several years. Uh, some counties have a millage tax. We've managed to stay away from that. I prefer to stay away from ever having another tax. I personally pay too many of them now. So, uh, I said, I feel like I'm springing this on most of you really at the last minute, but uh, that's, I, like I said, I'm presenting it, asking for us to get the same amount as we got last year. And uh, if you got any questions, um, we'll try and answer them. And that's all I've got. Okay. Thanks a lot for all you do. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Bill. Okay, we have a Pat Redden. Where you at? Did you sign up to speak? I'm here. Okay. I'm back again asking for some help with my road. We've got six families living back on Redden Trail. It's literally just wearing, every time it rains, it has to be redone. One of the residents, um, David Hicks, uses his tractor and he rebuilds that road every time we have a, a bad rain. And we're just desperate for some help. My husband, started the road or got it built 
back in the early 70s. And we've been maintaining it all that time. There wasn't that many residents back there then, but we're just really needing some help. The creek is getting wider and wider and it's taken a lot of my land. I've only got three acres and it keeps cutting in. We losing trees. And the, I don't know who owns the property up in front of me, but it's never maintained and I don't know if that's why. It's just laying and the losing trees on it. It's tearing my creek banks. So we're just really desperate for some help with it. Okay. Hoping that can happen. I couldn't hear the, what was the name of the road? Red and Trail. No, Red and Trail. It's in the Nichols area. Actually that is in my district. And I've talked to you a couple of times, um, Patsy. Uh, I did talk to the director of our road department. Uh, he's been out to look at it. And he has expressed a concern about a tree that really needs to be taken down that they can take down. That if it does come down, it will come across the bridge there. It's going to look, we're going to lose our bridge if we don't get some And uh, he, he's very aware of that. And he did share with me that, you know, the road department could take care of that. He also shared with me that uh, as far as grading your road, he could grade your road. And he said that they had some stockpiled gravel. It is creek gravel. And he said he would be glad to put that and grade it on the road if you all was all right with creek gravel. Well, that's what we've been maintaining it with uh, a said. whole lot. I mean, especially where it keeps washing out. But. Um, I don't know how to go about trying to find out something about, I don't know what's happening. I've never seen the creek. I've lived out there since 1953. I've never seen the creek just eating up the ground like it's doing right there in that, in that particular area. And I think it's so. doing that in a lot, a lot of areas in that area. Uh, just not your. <laughs> it's, it's eating uh, me away a little bit of time. It's done that there at QPO. Yeah. Uh, We're going to lose our bridge if, I, and again, I, if somebody could. We're not allowed to put anything on the creeks, are we? Um, I don't know anything about that. No. Getting some, like, big slabs of concrete and, and putting on the creek, is that allowed at all? No, not unless you go through the, the core or the, uh, you have to do that the right way. And Shannon and them can point you in the right direction. Shannon and Ruth Charlie. There you go, Charlie. Both of them can. Uh, and, and, and like I said, I did talk to the director, Robert Watkins, of the department. And he also expressed that right now, he can't really get to that because the storm works. And he has been working a lot in my district because we do have a lot of wood, wooded areas and trees on yeah. those. He said once he gets caught up, not only in District 1, but a few other districts, I think District 4, um, he would you know, take care of that. Yeah. But I'd take any advice that somebody can give me to try to figure out how to do things. So well, he, I took pictures of it from the day I came back there and sent to him, and then he went there, and it's before this last storm. Yeah. It was probably a few days before, because I know he's been busy, and I reached back out to him, and he hadn't went, but he did go, and he sent me pictures. And, yeah. Yeah, I've got some more pictures that I wanted to send to you yeah, okay. of this last time. Okay, I haven't been back in since the last time. Yeah. But that's all I can say okay. on behalf of uh, us trying to... I appreciate any today. help that anybody can give, if they can just point me in the right direction for things. Well, like the judge said, you might want to speak to the judge. I don't know if that's me or not. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Um, under new business, first reading re requested on ordinance 23-04 requiring smoke detectors for homes sold and rented in Bullock County. 
Commonwealth of Kentucky, Bullock County, Ordinance Number 23-04, an ordinance relating to the installation and verification of working smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors in all Bullock County residential dwellings to be known as the Aaron, Hazley, Reagan, and Holton Act. Be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of County of Bullock, Commonwealth of Kentucky. In summary, number one, sets forth the definitions. Number two, sets forth that smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors are required in every dwelling. Three, sets forth that a person may not knowingly interfere with or make inoperable any detectors. Four, sets forth that owners of all rental units used as residential dwellings must supply working detectors at time of lease and tenants must keep detectors in working order. Five, sets forth that an affidavit must be provided by the property owner at time of sale or lease of a dwelling that same as equipped with detectors in compliance with this ordinance. Six, sets forth that a fire district or department may enter a dwelling with consent to supply detectors at the owner or tenant's request and may charge a fee of up to $100 per visit to said property. Number seven, sets forth that any non-compliance with this ordinance is a violation with a fine of up to $250 per violation with each day of non-compliance being a separate violation. Number eight, sets forth severability. Number nine, sets forth inconsistent ordinances repealed. Number 10, sets forth ordinance to be published. Given first reading at a regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 7th day of March 2023, to be given second reading at a regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 21st day of March 2023. And Judge, just by way of explanation, the changes that were made to this ordinance from the previous first reading were all requested by the Fire Districts and Fire Department Chiefs. Okay. Thank you. And I think they were good additions. All right. Thank you, uh, Tammy. Um, Number two, actions requested on the uh, surplus items from the Parks and Recreation Department. No, well, I can't. It's basically, it's basically just junk, things that didn't work when we cleaned up over there. Uh, they have new equipment that we purchased over the last three years, and none of this stuff runs. All right, I'll put in the form of motion. We've got the list attached. I don't know if I need to itemize that, but I'll make a motion that we accept the request to list the items from the Parks and Recreation Department. It includes the items listed in the uh, attached sheet. Do you have that sheet? Mm -hmm. Second. Got a motion by 2nd District Magistrate Logsdon, a second by 4th District Magistrate Blingle to approve the uh, surplus items request list from Bullock County Recreation Department, Ed Atherton, Director. Uh, Sam, call the roll, please. Judge Summers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Logsdon? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Lemo? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And we have the same thing, actions requested on the uh, surplus items from the road department. I'll put that in the form of a motion too that we accept the uh, requested list of items from the road department to surplus. Second. Got a motion by second district magistrate Logston, a second by third district magistrate Johnson to accept the surplus items request list from the road department. Sam call the roll. Sanders? Yes. Logston? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Lamel? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, actions requested to uh, name a new road, Hannah Ridge Road. Charlie? Uh, Mr. Hanna is developing a dome that he's going to rent out for like an Airbnb. Uh, he's already obtained a conditional use permit. Uh, he's got a site plan is in process in our office. Uh, and he wants to develop a uh, uh, standalone driveway that will only serve the dome. Um, it's going to be around 2,000 feet long. Uh, and it will be cleaner addressing wise if we go ahead and name it uh, a private road name. He's not asking for no county maintenance, no county help. It won't affect any other property owners. Okay. I just seen something about this on Facebook recently. It looks like a really cool looking place, but yeah. really bizarre kind of. Way. Where yeah. is that exactly located? It's, it's off of Hoagland Hill. Okay. Okay. Motion on that. I, 
uh, I'll, I'll put it in the form of a motion that we accept the uh, name, I mean, not really a change, it's a new road, so accept the name Hannah Ridge Road as requested. Now that road is servicing just that location. Is that Correct. Uh, is that a private road that we're naming here? It's yep. a private road, but we're, we're actually naming it for emergency services and yep. address purposes. I second. Got a motion by second district magistrate Logston, a second by first district Sanders to approve the motion to name a new road, Hannah Ridge Road for uh, safety and security of, uh, for EMS and all the first responders. Uh, Sam called roll. Logston? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Blamo? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, actions requested to apply for a land and water conservation fund grant. Kim and your yes. Good morning. Your guest. Uh, my name is Kim Foster. I'm working with Bullock County Parks and Rec. I'm seeking approval today from the court to move forward with applying for two federal matching grants. First of all, I need to pass this around. I need this for my record keeping. If you wouldn't mind putting your name and address on here or the organization you're with. Thank you. The first grant is the Land Water Conservation Fund grant. This will aid in the restoration of the Maryville Parks pool. The second grant is a recreational <coughs> trails program. This aid, this grant will aid with the pouring the concrete, uh, pouring a concrete base under the existing pavilion. The pavilion has the walking trails, which we hope to pave and add two bridges. The maximum amount you can apply for with this grant is $250,000 per grant. I will be seeking $250,000 per grant. Both grants will allow us to make this area accessible for those with disabilities and family friendly. If approved today with the grants, I will be seeking help with, us, with Dustin Duncan, Duncan here from KIPTA. He serves as a grant compliance coordinator. Anyone wishing to leave comments agreeing or disagreeing with this project may fill out the form that was left on the back bench. Thanks for your consideration with this urgent matter for the court. Thank you, Kim. And any questions for Kim or Dustin? Are those matching grants? They are matching grants. So the county would have to match about five hundred thousand dollars. Yes, ma'am. Yep. What could the the monies go from elsewhere? We do have. We there is a, a budget for the parks. I think it's about a million dollars that we have. But why would we not? I mean, the matching funds part. Can that be through private donations, or can it be any? No, with no. this matching grant, if we're if we're putting five hundred thousand in, they'll match us for five hundred thousand. So I understand that, but the five hundred thousand we would be putting in wouldn't necessarily have to come strictly from fiscal court, would it? Couldn't it come from other sources? Other but we have five hundred. We have a million dollars to for our parks and rec. And that's great. But couldn't we ask for sponsorships? Or <coughs> you, the money would need to come directly from fiscal court out of our budget, but then if you get donations into our general fund outside of that, that that's really kind of what you're that's, that's asking That's a plus, about. but yes, yeah. we, yeah. we, we need to wouldn't necessarily have to just come straight out of our budget. We could find other ways to accumulate the money. But the money's already there, so it's already, yeah. so it's free money. But it could right. be. You could still it ask for it. Yeah, but but that money's already there. We wouldn't have to use the full amount for the trail program, but, but there's a matching grant there. The money's already in the budget. So it would just be like an additional, we've got the money to put up if I'm right. Yes, you're correct. So, so I just need approval to move forward. To give us 500000 extra right. toward what we're trying to do. Or so this, it's a win-win. Yeah. Right. For this project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's free money. I mean, I'll make a motion. I mean, we can. I mean, there's all. I mean, there's a million different things we can do, like what you're talking about. I think Mount Washington did some things. I asked, I did a sponsorship, you know, for an exercise station or something to walk around their city park. I don't know. I've got my logo there where somebody jumps up and does a squat or something. Tom, I don't know where they when they get to my sign, but they just supposed to do something there. But I, I give them a check and they put my logo on there. And you're supposed to bend over and do a push up or something. But I mean, there's a lot of things, different things that we could probably do. Obviously teaming up with you with the park department. But with this particular situation, it seems like, you know, that, that all we have to say is that the money's there and, our, and, and it's already there in the budget. And I, I'll make a motion that we move forward 
and allow you to apply for the recreational trails program. It's, it's two grants and the conservation. And the conservation. Mm -hmm. Wait, we need two separate motions or two grants. Okay. Are we done for? That's fair enough. Yeah, we, we can. He just put it into one, so I didn't know. Okay. We'll do the land one. Yeah. Would you like to add anything, Dustin? Yeah, I can clarify real quickly. So the matching funds can also come from in-kind donations of county labor. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, so it's not necessarily just hard cash. We can get creative with how we do that. Okay. I mean, I'd like to help out with all of that. Sure. Yeah. Save the tax Save money where we can. Yeah. Use it on another project. Yeah. If it can be so we free up more funds and parks. Uh, so, go ahead. The motion for the land grant is the one that's on the table right now. Okay. Okay, so I have a motion by First District Magistrate Logsdon about the Land and Water Conservation Fund grant. A second by Third District Magistrate Johnson to uh, seek approval to move forward with this grant. Sam, call the roll, please. Johnson? Yes. Lamo? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Bogston? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. <clears throat> now the second one. Yes, so we need to make a motion for the Trails program grant. So mm -hmm. Put that in the motion. Okay. Second. Got a motion by third district magistrate Johnson, a second by fourth district magistrate Blamo to apply for the recreational trails program grant as well. Sam call the roll, please. Blamo? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Logston? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. Foster. Thank you. Um, actions requested to change Rebecca Oseman, paramedic from part-time to full-time, starting March 24th of 2023, and I will make that motion. I will second it. We've got a second by First District Magistrate Sanders. Sam, call the roll, please. Judge Summers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Logston? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Lemo? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, Tammy, uh, first reading ordinance 2307 relating to the regular meeting time and place for fiscal court. Commonwealth of Kentucky, Bullock County Ordinance Number 23-07. <coughs> In order, <clears throat> sorry, in order to repealing Ordinance 19-15 relating to the regular meeting time and place for the Fiscal Court of Bullock County, Kentucky. Whereas the Fiscal Court of Bullock County has determined it to be advisable to change its regular meeting time. Now therefore, be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of County of Bullock, Commonwealth of Kentucky as follows. Section 1, Meeting Time. The Bullock Fiscal Court shall meet twice monthly. The first meeting of each month shall be held on the first Tuesday of the month, commencing at 6.30 p.m. The second meeting of each month shall take place on the third Tuesday of each month, commencing at 9.30 a.m. Section 2, Meeting Place. The Fiscal Court of Bullock County shall continue to meet in the county seat per KRS 67.080, subsection 1, located in the Bullock Fiscal Courtroom, Bullock County Courthouse, Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Section 3, severability. Should any section, subdivision, sentence, or clause of this ordinance be held unconstitutional or invalid for any reason by any court of competent jurisdiction, then such portion shall be deemed a separate, distinct, and independent provision, and such holding shall not affect the validity of the remaining portions of this ordinance. Section 4, inconsistent ordinances repealed. All ordinances and resolutions are parts thereof to the extent they are inconsistent herewith are hereby repealed. Section 5, Publication Requirement. This ordinance shall take effect upon passage and publication as required by law. Given first reading at a regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 7th day of March 2023, to be given second reading at a regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 21st day of March 2023. <clears throat> and Judge, I did reach out to Rich Ornstein, he's legal counsel with CACO, just to ask, will this create special meetings or anything like that since my understanding is at the beginning of every fiscal year, judge has put out the schedule for the year of the fiscal court meetings. Mm -hmm. There is an argument that if we change our meeting times before the end of the fiscal year, that could create special meetings on those 6.30 p.m. meetings. So I just wanted to put that out there. That is what Rich Ornstein had told me from CACO. So it would be possible to delay this until the beginning of the fiscal year, if you all would rather. That would be July 1 um, to get around that issue. 
we could make this effective July 1. It's essentially what I'm saying. I think making it effective July 1 would probably be the best thing to get around all this. That should be the That's just my opinion. I don't know how everyone else feels. But I, I like to go forward with yeah. it. So if it makes special meetings, then what would that understand? Then be you have a you publish your agenda, and you're, you have to hold to your agenda. And we're only talking, we're already in March, so we're talking from March to July 1. It's the period of time we're talking about. So it's, if you wanted to just make this effective July 1, it, that gets you around the whole requirement. Then it would give a little bit more time, I guess, for the county to prepare to, to make the change to. Yeah, I would probably be okay with that, too. Okay. Um, thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Um, at this time, Vera, any comments? No, everything's going well. The road department's been really busy cleaning roads, trees, <coughs> off the roads, and I'm very proud of the road department. <coughs> uh, Sean? Uh, no, I'll just echo what she said. You know, it's been a it's been a kind of a crazy storm, obviously. Uh, I mean, I've never seen, nobody's ever seen kind of winds like that without just a straight tornado. But it's a uh, you know, uh, school was out yesterday. I know Justin. We talked a little bit. Uh, uh, thank you all for what you all been doing. I know you all been doing a lot of stuff, not only behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, and, uh, but our entire emergency management team. I know they all been involved. In Working close with them, uh, several Mount Washington fire departments. You know, thank you all for everything you've done. You know, the phones have been ringing crazy. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of flooding, a lot of trees down, but I know everybody's been working really hard over the clock to make things happen. So I uh, appreciate everybody's hard work and, uh, uh, and everybody's patience. I know it's, 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 there's still a lot of people. I, mean, I know the numbers are down very low uh, without power. But, uh, it's hard to believe that, but uh, I know the, the communications, the internet, Electric, and everybody's out there working hard, and we've got a lot of help from outside the county. So uh, it's, it's just kind of a, a statewide, very widespread problem. So just thanks for all the hard work for for everybody, fire departments all throughout the county, emergency management, EMS, and everybody that's involved in the road department. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, it's been very interesting to see it all happen from this side. They seem to be doing a good job. Okay. Get it all caught up. Thanks, Karen. Brian. I just kind of echo what Sean says and I thank everybody, you know, all the people that's working out there and cleaning the roads up and taking care of the flooding issues and all that. Okay. And I guess my closing comments is this. We've been consumed uh, with, I went up and testified in Frankfurt on Senate Bill 37 and also the consumption with House Bill 5, which is doing away with the, uh, with the phasing out of the agronomic tax on the distilleries as well. Uh, so that's, that's a huge issue for our community. It's to the tune of um, Waltonham sent me some new numbers. I haven't had a chance to digest them yet, but when, when you look at the hole it's going to leave in our budget, the headwinds are, are tough. It's going to be like the winds we had this weekend to fill that gap moving on down the road. So our legislative body is working on us. We're working on us with our, our professional people as well. Uh, and we're still in negotiations with leadership on how to keep the funds uh, as they are today and what they could be in the future. Uh, and I can't thank, where's, um, I'm sorry that Brian's not here, excused him from coming, but I can't say enough about him being able to get out all the uh, inmates that were eligible to help out over the weekend and, and watch your people and Chris and Justin uh, all that y'all did all weekend and worked with Jose, Mayor uh, Owen in Mount Washington. Uh, I can't thank lg and &E enough and, and uh, Salt River. So when we did call, they made the effort to get power back on to not only the schools, but the red lights on 31E and the schools in the north end of the county. Uh, we got them back on yesterday to where they could have schools today. Yeah, well. Judge, I just, if I may, uh, somewhat echo what you all said, but I also want to, because they won't pat themselves on the back, I want to pat Justin, the entire emergency management agency, the entire 
uh, emergency 911, all the first responders over this last weekend. People, a lot of folks do not know the depth of the efforts that they had to put out and the good sense that they used thinking on their feet as this all played out over the weekend. As of Friday, due to a equipment problem due to the wind that Metro Safe had, our entire uh, ability to, to for the radios went down. And so we had to, uh, the they quickly started <coughs> dispatching first responders by the uh, uh, mobile terminal data, the mobile data terminals, and also utilizing telephones to, uh, to communicate back and forth, and then went to great uh, efforts throughout the night and, and probably somewhat even uh, a little bit at risk went to examine what we could do with all that wind. Thankfully the radios came back up at about 11 o'clock that night or between 10 and 11 when the wind died down but they did, they all, everybody, all the first responders around this whole county did a, an amazing good job and served the people with with uh, great forthrightness and wisdom throughout the, the, that emergency that set up. And they turned an emergency into just, you know, other people's emergencies are our everyday business. And that's exactly what they epitomized on Friday, uh, Friday night. Yes. So, you know, I want to, my hat's off to you very much. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They, they sure did. And, and, uh, one more note, you're going to have to help me, Vera, because I can't find the, the text that Brian sent. If you can, I have to do a, I have to speak about child abuse tomorrow at 12, so I won't be there. But if you would make the announcement. Yeah. I'm the jailer. Brian Whitaker has reached out to several of us about a reception that's going to be held over at the, at the jail at 11 o'clock tomorrow for Brother Duval. He has done the ministry, jailhouse ministry, and he is retiring. And it's open to anyone that wants to come at 11 o'clock tomorrow at the Buller County Detention Center. Thank you. 50 years of service. Yes, right. 50 years. Yep. So, and, and th thank you, Bill, for that. And also, I would like to, I can't thank Mayor Owen Taylor enough for being a regular attendee. And uh, my good friend, Mayor Dangerfield, Teresa, and uh, was, I use these terms loosely, but Jose, can't thank you all enough for being here. We're, we're making a point to stagger back and forth between, because you all and Mount Washington meet at the same time, but myself or Kay will be, we will try to be at most of the meetings as well instead of them being on my deck. So, uh, if I missed another elected official, I apologize. Uh, Kipta, thank you for being here today. To, and we're looking forward to a great work, working relationship with you all, not only on this project, but with our um, comprehensive plan, too, moving forward. And at this time, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Got a second by Second District Magistrate Logston. Uh, Sam, call the roll, please. Sanders? Yes. Logston? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Flemel? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you all for coming today. <clears throat> yeah. So, on the 14th, I'm sorry you came yesterday, man.